know that you'll continue to experience God's presence as we dwell in the Word. And uh, always remember, the Lord said that heaven and earth will pass away, but my Word shall remain forever. Amen? So I believe that, and we all believe that, that under the ministry of the Word, uh, the Lord rolls away every burden. Because what God does is when the Word is preached, the Lord's anointing moves. When the Word is spoken, God stands behind His Word to make it happen. And that's what God does. So I would encourage you that as you're seated, if you are burdened, remember your burdens are about to roll away. If you're sick, remember you're about to get healed. Amen. If you are troubled or you are um, having some nightmares or terrible dreams or something like that, all will pass away in Jesus' name. You know why? Because there is power in the word. When Satan came to Jesus three times, the Bible records that uh, Jesus said, it is written. Amen. And uh, Satan came again to Jesus and he said, and then he started to quote the scripture. Remember, in these end time days, there will be folks who will quote the scripture and twist the word, twist the word, so that you can get seduced and deceived by the deceptions of Satan. And you must be very, very vigilant concerning the word of God because in the end time days, there's a deception that is spreading all over. And the remnant of the Lord must be able to discern and must be able to, um, to understand that we need to wet everything spoken through the written word of God, through the Logos, and also through the, uh, this feedback scale. Yes, thank you. So, so that is going to help you and bless you. You know why? Because God wants to establish you as the Bereans in the book of Acts who were able to do what? Verify the teaching and the preaching of the apostles. Mind you, they were apostles of the Lord. And on the apostles' creed and the apostles' doctrine, we, our faith is firmly established. So you and I are called to understand that Bereans were one step ahead. They would verify and wet the teaching of the, and the doctrine of the apostles of Peter and Paul. And they would say it was written. Another time, it was written in the Old Testament. Amen? Because the New Testament was not yet ready. For 100 years, New Testament was not available. So how did the early church live? The early church lived by the Torah. They lived by the Old Testament, by the prophets, by the Psalms, by the poetry. And uh, they, they, they understood the word of God. And they knew that in all the books of the Old Testament, Jesus was portrayed. And they preached Jesus through the Old Testament. Praise God. Amen. So today we are going to understand, do we know our position in Christ? It's a very powerful word. Why I'm saying so. If you will know your position in Christ, I promise you that God is going to transform your life in Jesus' name. And our passage of our scripture is in 2 Samuel chapter 9. It's a very fantabulous portion of scripture. Only one place that it's written about the kindness of David. Kindness of David upon Mephibosheth. And let's understand, this is one of the most misunderstood stories in the Bible. It is found in 2 Samuel chapter 9. It is often considered a beautiful picture of grace, which is true. However, its full understanding far exceeds a picture of grace for the child of God. And we are going to understand that tonight. So let's stick on to our scripture. Then David said in 2 Samuel chapter 9, Is there yet anyone left of the house of Saul? that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake. Now there was a servant of the house of Saul whose name was Ziba. And they called him to David. And the king said to him, Are you Ziba? And he said, I am your servant. The king said, Is there not yet anyone of the house of Saul to whom I may show kindness of God? And Ziba said to the king, There is still a son of Jonathan who is crippled in both feet. So the king said to him, Where is he? And Ziba said to the king, Behold, he is in the house of Machir, the son of Amiel in Lodibar. Then King David sent and brought him from the house of Machir, the son of Amiel from Lodibar. And Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, came to David and fell on his face and prostrated himself. 
the Bible records. And David said, Mephibosheth. And he said, here is your servant. And then he says, David said to him, do not fear, for I will surely show kindness to you for the sake of your father, Jonathan, and will restore to you all the land of your grandfather, Saul. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> when I start reading like this, I get very excited. You know, you know when you come to a, a gracious king like David, who had a heart of God, he had a perfect heart, a heart which was open to the whisperings and the wooings and the warnings of the Holy Spirit. His heart was pliable and he knew the voice of the Holy Spirit. And God would testify and say about David that David's heart was a heart after God's own heart. Praise God. He was a man who loved God, who served God, who had a heart of God. And a heart of God is a heart of gold. And a heart of gold is a heart that shines brightly in the dark world that you will see and behold the glory of the living God in your life. And so I like to, uh, you know, I get excited when I started to read this. It says, I'll, go, I'll show kindness to you for the sake of your father, Jonathan, and will restore to you all the land of your grandfather's Saul. Now he didn't say I'll restore to you your father's land. He said I'll restore to you your grandfather's land. Wow. Grandfather's land. And grandfather was the king. All of Israel and all the property of the grandfather belonged to Saul. And King David is saying man if you are my man I love you my man and I'm going to bless you my man and I'm going to not only restore to you your father's property but I'm going to restore to you your grandfather's property everything that the devil has stolen to you from generations I will restore it back to you. Isn't that amazing? I like that. Don't you like restoration? Is there anything that you have lost? If you have ever lost anything in your life just position yourself with this understanding that restoration is about to take place in your life. Restoration is about to take place in your future. Restoration is about to take place and the breakthroughs are going to come and invade your life the way you have never ever experienced before because God is a God of restoration. He's not only interested in the first generation but he's just started to interest it to see the grandfather's generation and he says when I will bless you I will restore everything that you have lost in Jesus name. It doesn't matter what your physical status is. You may be crippled. You may be lame in both the feet. You may not be able to walk. You may fall prostrate before the gracious king. Because you do not know what is going to happen. Because King David could have called Mephibosheth to slaughter the lineage of Saul. Because Saul was chasing after David to be killed. And he did not want any seed of Saul to survive. Because seed of Saul was by primary default an enemy to David. But mind the heart of the Lord God Almighty. Weren't you and I enemies to the Lord God Almighty, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords of your life? We were wild, we were yet sinners. The Bible says Jesus died for you and me. He paid the price for you and me. And did what? He reconciled you and me and brought us into the fold that we will become the sons and the daughters of the Most High God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Man, I can preach a volume on this. All right, let's go. And you shall, what he says further down, will restore to you all, say all the land of your grandfather. All means 100%. Not of your fathers, but your grandfathers. All right. And you shall eat at my table regularly. Man, when the king calls you, he is not saying you are on a wheelchair. King is saying, man, you are going to sit with me on my banqueting table and I'm going to commune with you and I'm going to talk with you and I'm going to share my dainties and my, my delicacies with you and I'm going to eat with you as my own on the same table at the same time when I eat. Wow. Isn't that God always is busy making a banqueting table for you and me so that we can commune and dine with him and sit in his presence and eat in his presence and rejoice in his glory and say, God, I not only want to be in your presence, I don't only want to see your face, but I want to eat in your presence, oh God. I want to have, you know, when you start eating with God, come on. When you start eating with God, there is some different level of your understanding spiritually because you will be flabbergasted when God starts to talk to you on the dining table. 
there is something so intimate and something so powerful that God wants to release to you tonight in the name of Jesus that God says on the dining table I'm going to dine with you I've spread a banqueting table for you I'm not only restoring to you but you will sit with me and eat with me hallelujah I like my God don't you like your God I like my Jesus praise the Lord do you want to eat chicken in the morning, mutton in the afternoon, yakni pulao in the night time, biryanis in the day time? What do you want to eat? Tell me. My boys don't want to eat something. Today I said, please give me some plain simple food. I am fed up eating the meat. No. Trust me. I told my wife. So tonight I am going to go back home and eat some nice lentils and I am going to eat some fried bhindi. Yes. Okras. For those who don't know what bhindi is. Alright? That's what I'm going to eat with two chapatis with ghee on between. That's it. Man, I'm fed up eating the meat all the time, morning, afternoon, evening. Morning, afternoon, evening. And that's the condition. So if you're fed up eating meat, come to my home. I'm going to give you vegetarian tonight. Alright. Then what happened? So, <laughs> alright. I, I don't have time. Okay. All right, <clears throat> let's go. So he says, again he prostrated himself and said, What is your servant that you should regard a dead dog like me? These are Mephibosheth's words. Then the king called Saul's servant Ziba and said to him, All that belong to Saul and to all his house I have given to your master's grandson. You and your sons and your servants shall cultivate the land for him and you shall bring in the produce so that your master's grandson may have food. Nevertheless, Mephibosheth, your master's grandson, shall eat at my table regularly. See the progression? Progression is God is saying, I'm not only going to restore you your father's property, but I'm going to restore you your grandfather's property. Then I'm going to bring you to my banqueting table. I'm going to eat with you. And now I'm not only going to eat with you, but I'm going to depute servants who will go and work on behalf of you on your field, on your grandfather's property. Come on. Praise the Lord. You know, when you have the king's favor, when you have the Lord God's favor upon your life, man, he will orchestrate everything so awesomely and so powerfully that he will depute men and women to take and cultivate your land that belong to your father and to your grandfather and all the produce they will produce and bring it to Mephibosheth. Don't you like the deal? <laughs> That's why I get excited. You see the progression, how God blesses you? He's saying, hey, you don't only come to my door. You don't have to fall prostrate in my presence. If you've fallen prostrate, that's fine. David was not bothered about his prostration. But David was bothered about one very own thing that he wanted to show kindness to, to the son of Jonathan with whom he was in a covenant. Yes. Praise the Lord. Okay, let's go. What says here? All that belong to Saul and all his house I have given to your master's grandson. You and your sons and your servants shall cultivate the land for him. And you shall bring the produce so that your master's grandson may have food. Right? Nevertheless, Mephibosheth, your master's grandson shall eat at my table regularly. Now Ziba had how many sons? Okay, how many people? How many children? Okay. The other night also I was talking to my wife again. All right. <laughs> Okay, now Ziba had 15 sons. How many sons? It didn't record to be daughters. 15 sons. Amen. In Indian uh, and African uh, sentiments, boys are assets. Are you there? And here the boys are talking about, he's not talking about the daughters. Daughters are only also there. But doctors are given to marriage and they are gone away. Right? Daughters are also accept for us in the, in the word of God. But in Indian thinking and African thinking, daughters are what? Liabilities, they think, okay, so they've gone, they've gone away, and you know, no, 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 no. Every children in the house of God, every child in the house of God, whether male or female, are assets in the kingdom of God. Yes. You must know that. Yes. That is biblical terminology. Yes. If you have seated here with an Indian mindset, get delivered right now in Jesus' name. Yes. Or if you are seated with an African mindset, get delivered now, Felix, in Jesus' name. Yes. Praise the Lord. Are you with me? 
Both the sons and the daughters are assets in the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. 15 sons. How many sons? Okay, so he had... All right. According to all the... the sorry, where did I go? Okay. Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. Then Ziba said to the king, according to all that my lord the king commands his servant, so your servant will do. So Mephibosheth ate at David's table as one of the king's sons. Yeah. Say sons. Yeah. Whoa. Being in the territory of the enemy, comes to the king's chamber, gets a great favor, gets an invitation, because of one thing that was determined between David and Jonathan. I want to focus your attention on your covenant making aspect of David and Jonathan. Alright? So, so it says here, the Bible says further down, So Mephibosheth lived in Jerusalem for he ate at the king's table regularly. Now he was lame in both feet. Now someone may ask, why would David now king allow the grandson of the man that tried to kill him? Right? To continue to live as he should have been the next heir to the throne of Israel. The answer to that question is found in always understanding. See, say covenant. Say covenant. covenant. Very, very important. We are not in a contract with God. Contracts can be cancelled. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. When God made a covenant, he, did not, he was not interested in a piece of paper. He was interested that when he made a vow with you, when he gave a word to you, he said, man, I will ratify my word with the blood of my son. Yes. That is that I will not only speak to you, but I will sign it with the blood of my son, that it will be etched in your memory, in your DNA, in the stones, in the earth, and no one will be able to erase it, because the blood that gives life has got the power. You must know that. And that is the power of the Holy Ghost that God wants to tell you that you are a man and a woman of covenant. Now let's get back to Jonathan. 1 Samuel chapter 18 verses 3 to 5. Then Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him. Next verse. Ne loved him as himself. I like that. Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was on him and gave it to David with his armor, including his sword and his bow and his belt. Isn't that a beautiful verse? 1 Samuel 18, 3 to 5. So Jonathan made a covenant. When did Jonathan made a covenant? When his father, Jonathan's father, Mephibosheth's grandfather, King Saul, was king of Israel. Hello? David was no one related to Jonathan. But Jonathan entered into a covenantal relationship with David. And David, when he came to power, when he came to authority, when he became king over all Israel, he remembered the covenant. Yes. Praise the Lord. Whenever you have come to your epitome of success, when you have come to the right on the top of your platform, always remember the covenants that you have made with God and God has made with you. And if you have made covenants with one another in the house of God or outside the house of God, you must remember because now is the time that you must show kindness to somebody. Yeah. Because that somebody could have been a nobody. Are you with me? That somebody was Mephibosheth. He was lost. He was now to be found. Why? Because the king remembered his covenant that Jonathan had made with David. David had not made the covenant. But Jonathan had made the covenant. And he took off his robe and put it on him. Praise the Lord. Covenant tells us, all that is mine is yours. Yes. What covenant tells us? All that is mine is yours. Right? So for example, all that is mine is my wife's. Praise the Lord. And all that is hers is mine. Hello. That is why we have joint account. Praise the Lord. Any marriage that doesn't have a joint account has a problem. Why? Because you are counting your penny. You are counting your penny. You know, she is counting hers. And becomes a problem. If you not have a joint property and a joint account, then you are on a very shaky ground. Are you with me? All right. I'm not, marriage is not my topic now. Let me go here. So Jonathan through covenant elevated David. Remember this. Jonathan through covenant, through covenant 
elevated David to an equal position in his family. David was a shepherd boy. David was not of the lineage of the kings. David's father was not selected to be who? The king of Israel. Saul was selected and elected by God himself. And prophet Samuel anointed Saul. When Saul missed it, then David came into the picture. Are you with me? Right? So let's go further down here. Okay? So David had an equal position in his family. A blood brother. Through the terms of covenant, David became the next rightful heir to the throne upon Jonathan's death. Mephibosheth, as Jonathan's son, then became a son to David through the same covenant. Are you with me? Now the question now is, why is this so important to each and every one of us? You must understand that it's very, very important. Every Christian must understand that the covenant of Jesus Christ, we are now positioned in a heavenly place, seated at the right hand of God, and everything on the world is at your command. That means, that means the earth and all its fullness belongs to God. Don't you believe that? Are you with me? All right. When everything belongs to God and God through his covenant that he has made with you and with me because the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 8 32 onwards he says that he has predestined us, he has called us, he has justified us and he has glorified us. He has chosen us before the foundations of this earth so that we will be called what? The sons and daughters of the Most High God and we will be co-heirs with Jesus Christ. Isn't it amazing? Co-heirs means I'm, Jesus has signed blind, blindly and blankly on the check. Now Samuel signs the second signature and withdraws any amount that he needs or he wants or he desires from the banks of heaven. Come on. That is what it means being a co-heir or a co-signatory of the deal that God has made with you. And when God has made a covenant with you, everything that belongs to God now belongs to you. You cannot imagine, right? Very difficult. Because our mind does not think like God. Our mind is always thinking, man, I'm getting 5,000 dirhams as my salary in a month. I have to pay this bill, I have to pay that bill. I do not know from where I'm going on a vacation. I don't understand how to get around that because our mind is so earthly based that we cannot think bigger the way Jesus is thinking and the way God is thinking. Are you with me? So let's go into the book of Luke chapter 22, 67 to 71. Now these are Jesus' words. But he said to them if I tell you you will not believe and I if I ask a question you will not answer but from now on the son of man will be seated where at the right hand of the power of God and they all said are you the son of God then and he said to them yes I am that was the first time Jesus was really uh, was revealing his identity as the son of God to the Pharisees and to the Sadducees and they got mad at Jesus they said now he this is a blasphemy that he's saying he's a son of God so we should take him and crucify him take him and kill him this was the first time Jesus was revealing his identity to the Sadducees and Pharisees at the time but what was he re uh, revealing he says from now on the son of man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God and they all said are you the son of God and he said to them yes right the Bible says Apostle Paul certifies what Jesus said and he writes in the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verses 19 to 22 and if you would bear with me and hang on to that verse it says these are in accordance with the working of the strength of his might which he brought about in Jesus Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand where in the heavenly places yes. that's what Jesus was prophesying that's what Jesus was telling about himself to the Sadducees and Pharisees 
My dear brothers and sisters, when you have the mind of God, you start speaking the words of God. Then you start speaking the prophetic word over your own life. At that time, Jesus was on the earth, but Jesus said, now you will see the Son of Man seated on the right hand of God the Father. What Jesus was saying, he was prophesying about him going back to heaven, and he'll be seated in the heaven, and all the powers of heaven and of earth and below the earth will be handed on to Jesus. He was prophesying before the religious scholars and telling them, look I am being glorified I am the son of God and now on you will see now on that's what he was saying those people were flabbergasted they said this is a blasphemy this cannot happen and they wanted to kill Jesus for that but Jesus knew himself Jesus knew his future Jesus knew that he is the son of God Jesus knew that all heaven's authority belongs to him alone and so when it belongs to him alone he is the ruler in charge of the whole universe amen, amen. amen. praise the Lord and a lot of time, a lot of young people grapple with identity issues, right? Because your peers and your teachers and your parents have looked down upon you. They have talked against you. They have belittled you in the society. They have reprimanded you probably. And you think very awkwardly about yourself. And so you have gone into your shell. But the Lord is saying, hey, now it's time that you come out from that shell and you start thinking about who you are in Jesus Christ. Because it is your position, it, it is your position that God is in the process of defining and refining because the more well you are aligned in the position with Jesus, you will understand where you are how you are supposed to operate and how you are supposed to rule and have dominion over your domain in the name of Jesus Amen, Amen. we are made to rule say I am made, made to rule praise God we are made to rule and one day you and I are going to rule this earth for 1000 years with Jesus and he's coming soon so get in that mindset of a ruler hallelujah get into a mindset don't be like Matthew worship and say hey I'm like a dog you're not a dog you're not a worm you are the son of the most high God you are called to sit on the king's table you are supposed to eat and banquet with the king and not only that the king will instruct that your land will be cultivated by strangers and the produce will be brought before your feet do you believe that sound of amen that's what God does so if you are seated here depressed, dejected, no, 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 no. Get out from that shell. Get out from that, uh, from that zone and start zoning yourself. Positioning yourself with Jesus that you will understand that you are made to rule. You are made to, made to have dominion over your domain in the name of Jesus. Yes. Amen. Amen. Alright. So what happened here? Paul is writing. He was raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named not only in this age but also in the one to come. There is no other name that can ever supersede or substitute the name of Yeshua. <laughs> Hallelujah. You have power in the name of Jesus. You cast out demons in the name of Jesus. You raise the dead in the name of Jesus. You cast that mountain of debt to the sea in Jesus name. Every debt must be cancelled. Your marriage must be restored. Your finances must be restored. Your land must be cultivated. And somebody has to do that job for you. Let God command his angels to go. The ministering angels who are deputed to minister unto the sons and the daughters of the Most High God. Hallelujah. I have got ministering angels who minister for me, who are laboring for me, who cultivate my land, who do the work that I should not be doing. And I must be sitting in the banqueting table, eating at the king's table and having great time of fellowship in the presence of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. So, always remember church, it is the enemy's ultimate goal. Ultimate goal to get you unaligned to the position. Always remember, when you're hitting your goal, when you're hitting a destiny, when you're running fast with God, he will throw a golden apple, he will try to detract you, detour you. That's the strategy of Satan. By false prophecy or by, by false teachers by false doctrine he will try to detour you so that what you're hitting your target hard and so now he will detract you so that you know it takes time for you to take a u-turn and go back to your position yes. are you with me 
But we are not those people. We are like the Bereans who know how to dissect the world. And we know how to divest the world and how to invest our time and our money energy in the process and in the call and in the vision that God has placed within us and in us so that we are bang on on target. Bullseye. Amen. Praise the Lord. So the enemy will do all in his capacity to keep every Christian from knowing the position in Jesus Christ. Thus doing what? Nullifying your authority nullifying the power that God has given to you and that authority and power will stop being used because you have been detoured you have been distracted and so the enemy is very happy when you are shelled for a while come on because now you are running full steam and all of a sudden something happened all of a sudden you heard a gossip all of a sudden you heard a rumor all of a sudden you heard a false accusation so what happened is it detracted you the things that you were doing for the Lord you stopped doing it why? because you heard a false rumor that's the strategy of Satan so what you'll do is you'll plug in your ears you'll put your beatbox big big you know right? you will shut out all the sounds of the world you will shut out every gossip, you'll shut out every rumor, you'll shut out every false doctrine, you'll shut out every false teaching. Come on, you will only hear what God is saying. You are fine-tuned with those big uh, big bubbles of beatbox and the uh, big bubbles of both speakers hanging on your ears that has got noise cancellation facility that will cut out every noise of Satan and will tune in to the right frequency that you will keep running your race in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Because the more you will hear of God, the more you will be able to achieve for God. The more you will achieve for God, there will be more accolades and there will be more, pro- more blessings. And you will see the glory of God manifest in your life. You know why? Because you are the mover and the shaker in God's kingdom. Hallelujah. You are a mover and a shaker. Say, I'm a mover and a shaker. Praise the Lord. And that's what God is calling us to do so. So what happened here? Right? Let me ask you a question. Did David earn his position with Jonathan? Yes or no? No. No, sir. It was Jonathan who made a covenant. Because Jonathan was in a place of authority. Was of the house of the king. Are you with me? He had the authority. He was not obligated to make a covenant with David. But because he loved David and the favor of God was upon David, Jonathan entered into a covenantal relationship. Don't you think that when you were running away from God, God stepped and stopped you and said, I will make you my son. Hello? It was he was not obligated. He could have chosen somebody else. Your neighbor instead of you. But he says no. Not your neighbor. It's you. I have chosen you. I have cherry picked you. I have hand picked you. You are mine. And my daughter. And my son. And he said I will enter into a covenant. That's what God was doing. Samuel never wanted to be a pastor. Samuel never wanted to be in the business of the kingdom of God. He wanted to be something doing in the secular world. But God said, hey, no, Sam, it's not you, it's me. I'm making a covenant with you. And when I make a covenant with you, I will ensure that you will do what I have called you to do. And you will take great delight in doing what I have called you to do. Praise the Lord. Amen. So likewise, our position is not something that we have earned but rather it is God showing the surpassing riches of his grace and his kindness towards us don't you think God was kind to you God was gracious to you God was merciful to you he picked you up from the mighty clay he picked you up from a heathen background he picked you from worshipping idols he brought you to a place where now you can interact with the living God He said, hey, stop. You will no longer serve the Pharaoh. You no longer serve Egyptian. But you will serve me. You will sit with me. You will have a banqueting table before you. I like the song. What the song? He brought me to his banqueting table. Over me is love. We used to sing that song, right? We we learned it in us, you know, little angel school. 
Sometimes we should sing those songs. Reminding ourselves, man, he brought me to a banqueting table. From where do you want to eat? From the garbage truck or from the banqueting table? Come on. Where do you want? From a food truck outside? Huh? From a street side shop? No, 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 no. God is saying, come on. Get out of that eating from the garbage truck. From the street side food. I am calling you to have a banqueting with me. And not once, but every day. And every time, if you want to eat three times, you eat with me. If you want to eat five times, you eat with me. I will eat with you together on the banqueting table that I have spread before you and I will flourish you and I will bless you. Now you will be eating the best of the best. Angels will be your butlers. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, <clears throat> it is imperative that every believer know how they are positioned in Christ and to know the authority that Jesus has placed upon you. Say authority. authority. Uh, say authority. Say loudly. Authority. Very, very important. Even a small child, Rafael, can cast a demon out. Yeah. Even a small child, small child that Abigail can cast a demon out. You know that? Die yeah. in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Let me give you a life story. There was a man who went to India. And there was, you know, they used to have open air meetings in remote parts of India. And these men, the missionaries were having meetings. And they would say, in the name of Jesus, you get healed. And so many people were getting healed. So this guy from the opposite section, you know, he came. He was very skeptical about what's happening. So he said, hey, let me check it out. I want to destroy the meeting. So he wanted to, he went in with an intention to destroy the meeting. What the missionaries were doing, these are ordinary people. All right, and they were doing extraordinary supernatural work in those remote parts. So you know what happened is that once, you know, uh, he got, he was watching them very carefully and he was ramshackled in his thinking. That means God shook his thinking up, but yet he did not believe it. So what happened is there was one guy who was paralyzed, child was paralyzed and he had twisted hands and legs. And so, because this guy was there, he said, okay, I will check it out if God can do a miracle. Now this guy is still not a believer. Listen to this. Still not a believer. He is there to persecute the church. Now he is put in this place that the child has got twisted hands and twisted legs paralyzed from top to bottom. And he said, I will try that same in the name of Jesus. If Jesus will heal, then I know that Jesus is true. So what God did is, God said, okay, fine. He said, he copied those guys. Okay, he said, in the name of Jesus, I command you, get well. And all of a sudden, instantly, he saw the hands coming back to normal. The legs got started to straighten up. He got down on his knees. He repented, wept for hours together and made Jesus his Lord. He said, I have seen, I have tasted, I knew. I came to persecute this meeting. I came to destroy this meeting. I wanted to put a false accusations on these Christian missionaries. But I know that there is power in the name of Jesus. If a heathen can do that and God can stand behind the name of his son Jesus, how much more you and me can do mighty miracles in the name of Jesus. And I want to encourage you tonight. A lot of time we take everything thrown at us. No, we will put a stop and we will start exercising that authority in the name of Jesus. What Jesus says in Luke chapter 10 verses 19 and 20. Behold, I have given you authority to, to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing say nothing nothing, nothing will injure you nothing. are you having an injury satan is trying to make you fall into accidents problems anything no 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 injury no injury say no injury no calamity no sickness no disease no accidents come on no suicides no depression no disillusionment come on speak it in Jesus name God has called you for a greater purpose and he says I have given you authority who? the son who is seated on the right hand of God the father is saying I have given you authority if Jesus has given you authority it, that authority does not come to you from Satan it does not come from your manager it does not come from your pastor it comes from the king of kings and the lord of lords the lord Jesus Christ give him a loud clap offering come on a louder one shout unto the Lord and say I will exercise that authority in Jesus name Jesus is saying 
I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing will injure you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice. When you cast out a demon, don't rejoice. When you heal the sick, don't rejoice. Give God the glory. But rejoice that your names are written where? In the book of life. In the Lamb's book of life. Rejoice that your names are recorded in heaven. Amen. It is he who can either write or erase. Nobody else. Amen. Rejoice in that. These things you will do. These authority I have given to you. Cast out demons. Raise up the dead. Heal the sick. Do supernatural things in the name of Jesus. Sometimes we are so carried away with the supernatural. But we, under, we fail to understand that supernatural is living right within us. Yeah. Amen. Alright. So how is this power accessed or activated? How is this power? This is authority. Authority is there. Power is there. Anointing is there. In you right now. Right now. All of you. I know most of you are believers, Christians. Amen. All of you. If that power and authority is residing inside of you, how will you activate it? Through faith. Absolutely. Through faith. You must believe that you are the son of God. You must believe that there is a banqueting table spread before you. Stop eating from the garbage truck. Start eating from the banqueting table. And I promise you, you will see the manifestation of the supernatural that you have yet not fathomed or imagined in the name of Jesus because God is interested to do it and make it happen for you. Amen. Jesus says in Mark chapter 11, 22 to 26, and Jesus answered saying to them, have what? Come on, say it. Have? Have what? Did you say have biryani? Have faith. Say have faith. Praise the Lord. Truly I say to, uh, to you, whoever says to this mountain, you have mountains? Mountains will come your way. Valleys will go through. It's your part of your process. Despite your process, God is positioning you. Hello? It doesn't matter whether you're mountaintop or going through the valley. He's positioning you with Him so that you will constantly enjoy the kingdom of God within you, the kingdom of righteousness, peace, and joy of the Holy Ghost. It does not matter what your circumstances are. It matters if Jesus is there in your boat. Amen. Praise the Lord. It matters. So he says, truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says is going to happen, it will be granted him. Amen. Believe. Yes. Then Jesus believe. Now you will see son of man seated on the right hand of God the Father. Praise the Lord. Can you imagine the spiritual vision that Jesus always had? He knew his identity from where did he come and he knew that he is sent from the Father and he can have access to the Father's kingdom at any time. He knew. That is why in prayer he would commune with the Holy Ghost. In prayer he would commune with his Father. He would eat at the Father's table and then the whole day he'll go and preach. Wow. If you can eat at the banqueting table, you can preach all your life. If you can pray, you can preach. Hello? If you can pray, you can preach. That's what God is calling His church. And we're entering into a season of five days of fasting and prayer starting this Sunday. A great time. Why? Because God is going to equip us. We are going to dine in His presence. And God is going to honor us. So what is He saying? He's saying, truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, it does not matter what mountain you're carrying. Mountain of debt, Mountain of marital problem, mountain of job problem, mountain of business problem, mountain of future, mountain of paying your bills. It doesn't matter what mountain you are facing. You must start believing that when you will speak to that mountain, that mountain must obey and must be cast into the sea. That is the authority that Jesus has given. That you are the way maker. Say, I'm the way maker. I am the bulldozer. <laughs> Where's the bulldozer? Right in your mouth. Right in your heart. Right in your coconut. 
all right when you put it into action that will work as a bulldozer it will thresh out everything your enemies that stand before you it is going to destroy them chop them in jesus name every mountain will be destroyed and god will make a marble stone entry for you i will go before you i will level every mountain for you raise up every valley for you I will create an even path for you to walk on. I will cut the gates of iron and bronze for you and give you what? Give you what? Sister Catherine, give you hidden treasures of darkness and the riches that are stored in secret places. Wow, what is going to give you? Riches. Come on, riches. Riches so that he will prove that he is the Lord God of Israel and Jesus will be glorified. He is interested. Are you interested to exercise the authority that God has given you? So he says here, therefore I say to you, all things for which you pray and ask, believe that you have received them and they will be granted to you whenever you stand praying. We forget sometimes that part getting into that mountain moving faith so much that we stop exercising the most important factor that will that will trigger your blessing because a lot of time when you rub shoulders in the family what happens sometimes sibling rivalry sometimes competition sometimes enmity sometimes you know accusations happen in the house of God when you're in a family of God and you're living together a lot of things happen so when that happens, what you must do? You must exercise the gift that God has given to you to forgive. Because if you will not forgive your brother and sister, God will not forgive you. If God will not forgive you, His grace will not be upon you. If His grace is, upon, is not upon you, His favor will stop operating through you. If His favor stops operating through you, you will be like a, 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 a stagnating man and a woman who has got every knowledge but has failed and ceased to operate in his calling. Why? Because forgiveness, unforgiveness is a cancer in the house of God that will cause division, that will cause enmity, that will cause disease to come in into the body of Christ, that will eat into your prosperity little by little and you will not realize what's happening into your system. It is like cancer. It's little by little. And ultimately the doctor says you are dead meat. Now you are a dead dog. Are you with me? Unforgiveness is like that cancer. And so Jesus is reminding. Whenever you stand praying forgive. If you have anything against anyone. So that your father who is in heaven. Will also forgive you your transgressions. But if you do not forgive. Neither will your father who is in heaven will forgive your transgressions if God is not going to forgive you then there's no banqueting table because God doesn't eat with his enemies God eats with his friends <laughs> do you ever eat with your enemies he says I will do what a banqueting table before your enemies that means he will bring them to you with peace so that you can be able to eat with them without peace you cannot eat with them are you with me? Are you going through a turmoil in your relationship? Get that sorted. Ask God to forgive you. Ask God to forgive your spouse, your children. Let there be no dysfunctionality in your relationships in the house of God. And I promise you, when you start moving in that and operating into that call of forgiving one another and operating in that, in that, in that realm, I promise you, even your enemies will be at your footstool and God will prepare a banqueting table for you again to eat. Right? The word have, you know, it says there, right? You will have, Jesus said, have faith in God. Say have. have. I've highlighted there. Have. Okay, what does the word have mean? Have comes from the Greek word echo. A verb which means to have, hold in the hand, in the sense of wearing of garments, arms and the like. Topically, to have or hold the possession of the mind. To have equivalent or to own possession of the mind what is the possession of the mind in my mind I'm determined that if Jesus said you will have it you will have it Amen. if you'll get your job you will get your job Amen. if you will get your debt to be written off it will be written off Amen. you are so determined you are so determined in your mind 
because you believed in God and you are trusting and partnering with God your life is in the right positioning I promise you your miracle is about to break through in the name of Jesus a lot of time you wait for a long period of time you don't have to wait for a long time you know why because God's delays are not God's denials because at the right time God will show up but I say hey God hasten up hasten up if you are going through a very terrible situation say God hasten up and I promise you God will hasten up because there are many places that God expedited his cause hasten up oh God what how, how do you get hasten up how do you get expedited it is by the anointing of God you get expedited when the anointing came upon Philip right he was running along the chariot and all of a sudden what happened he got transported back the anointing expedited the work of God in the name of Jesus it is your anointing that will expedite your visioning your empowerment your your breakthrough your miracle your supernatural in the name of Jesus so get aligned to the oil why because that oil will break that yoke and he will position you so that you will start walking in liberty that God has called you to be amen so hold that mind possession of the mind that you will have what you have prayed in Jesus name so every Christian should consider mountains or obstacles in their life as nothing more than an opportunity to apply your faith in God amen. if you're going through a mountain or you're going through a valley always remember it's an opportunity here again to apply your faith in the Lord God Almighty amen, amen. when you're climbing a hill what do you do is you change the gear right yes. so there are occasions when you're climbing a hill you change gear but that gear will give you that extra power and extra boost in the name of Jesus if you need some nitro in your fuel put that nitro and the nitro will speed it up in Jesus name amen, amen. amen. Yes. how do you get that nitrogen Get into the presence of God. Say, Lord, I need that extra fuel. I need that extra push of God. I need that extra push of God. I'm climbing a steep mountain of God. I want to take it down. And I want to be a victor in wear the victor's crown. In the name of Jesus of God. It is not only that Jesus is wearing the victor's crown. You are also wearing the crowns of glory upon your head. Satan can see those crowns of glory upon your head. And he does not see it. And he's not happy about it. He wants to snatch and steal that glory crown from you. You will not allow him to do so. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. So you must know that it is an opportunity that you can exercise your faith in Jesus' name. Right? We can only achieve that goal when we fully comprehend our position in Christ. We are, the, we are in the process. The process positions us. Always remember, the process positions us, aligns us, so that we will be in the banqueting table of the Lord and God will depute his angels to work on your behalf even where you have not sown you will start reaping in the name of Jehovah that's the word of God says even where you have not sown you will reap amen that's what God is going to do in your jobs in your businesses in your future in your finances where you are not sown God will start giving you bonuses come on all of a sudden a bonus will be given all of a sudden an increase will come through all of a sudden a promotion will come through all of a sudden a great job will come through and you will not know what's happening because God is doing something powerful in the spiritual realm why? because now you are sitting with him in the banqueting table and eating last verse for the night Ephesians chapter 2 verses 4 to 10 Ephesians 2 4 to 10 but God being rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us even when we were dead in our transgressions did what made us alive I like that made us alive together together with whom with the son who is seated on the right hand of God the father Isn't that amazing made us alive together with Christ by grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ where are you seated where are you seated if you are seated in heaven where the earth is Aaron under Aaron's feet under Debbie's feet so why you live so timid lives discouraged lives why you allow Satan to throw any garbage on your coconut or through your iPhones or through your television programming or through the podcast you are hearing no 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 you will hear God's voice and you will know where you are seated when you know you are seated with Jesus in the heavenly realm all authority that I have I have given unto you yes. hallelujah yes. praise the Lord 
so that in the ages to come he might show the surpassing riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. I like that word. In the ages to come. Your generation after generation. Saul died, did not know what's going to happen. Jonathan died, did not know what's going to happen with my paralyzed child. He did not know, but God knew. God knew. Your parents may not know that you'll get saved, but God knew. Many of you sit here from different religious backgrounds. They did not know what is going to happen with their sons and with their daughters. But God knew what is going to happen with you. God knew that you will be banqueting in his presence. God knew that you will be becoming a rich man and a woman of God. God knew that he will have dominion over your domain and rule over the earth. In the name of Jesus, there is no power of Satan that can come against you. God knew that. God knew that. So that in the ages to come he might show the surpassing riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through and that not of yourselves it is the it is the gift of God. And not as a result of works so that no one may boast. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's all rise in the presence of God. Come on. Start exercising that authority that God has given you right now in Jesus name right now right now if you're sick get healed right now in Jesus if you are in a troubled situation get delivered right now in Jesus name if you're down and out get be delivered be sweat free in Jesus name because God is interested in your welfare more than your pastor God is interested in your welfare he wants to see you progress he wants to see you prosper he wants to see you flourish he wants to see you to be the head and not the tail up always and never beneath I like that up always always up never beneath because that's what God is calling you come on everywhere pray I know you all are believers come on everywhere pray 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 come on come on raise up your hands start praying come on come on start speaking start speaking to that mountain in the name of Jesus start start speaking start speaking right now because when you speak God's word God will stand behind his word and he will make it happen he will make it happen Everywhere pray, 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 pray In the name, open your mouth and pray The Bible says, open your mouth wide And I will fill you I will fill you, God will fill you With his manna from heaven God will fill you and bless you With the best of the banqueting table But you must open your mouth Come on Come on everywhere, everywhere Pray, pray, pray In the name of Jesus In the name of Jesus I command those mountains to part In Jesus name Those valleys to be raised up In the name of Jesus Every financial trouble That your church may be going through Lord, I rebuke that mountain In the name of of Jesus every mountain of death I command you cast be cast into the sea in Jesus name in Jesus name every mountain of relationship issues that your people are struggling with oh God oh Lord I speak to those mountains uh, be cast into the sea now in Jesus name Amen. come on speak it don't stop don't stop don't stop open your mouth wide and he will fill you Lena ma shakara la mandara la ma Lera la ma sokoro lo monde yere La bode ya na ma seke ne mende yere le me Shara la mandoro kolomo se Ramon di ya na ma seke ne me shere le le Lena ma shoro lo mo se the Lord is saying that the mountains that you are facing right now, I'm destroying them. I'm threshing it down. In the name of Jesus, I'm destroying it. In the name of Jesus. Because God is interested in your positioning. As long as you know that you belong to Jesus, you will be overcomer. You will be more than conqueror. You will be a victorious person. You will walk in victory. In the name of Jesus. Elama sakara la mandarala. Come on, come on, believe it, believe it in your heart. Believe it that you are seated on the right hand of God the Father. Seated on the right hand of God the Father. You are not here on earth, you are here on earth to let the kingdom of God come. You are on earth for a purpose. That the kingdom of God will come on this earth. 
Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The will of God is the kingdom of God. The will of God is the deliverance of his people. The will of God is the healing of his people. The will of God is that he will flourish and prosper. The will of God is that he will lack no good thing. The will of God is that your bonds will overflow with plenty and your presses will burst out with new wine in the name of Jesus. The will of God is that you will be in good health and good strength in the name of Jesus. The will of God is that your children will be the head and not the tail. They will be, doesn't matter what is their limit but it does matter that they are banqueting in the Lord's table banqueting yes. mm. worship Jesus don't go the way you have come. Go with a change of heart. Change of mind. Here, Lord, as you draw me near, desperate for you. Desperate for you. Come on, I surrender. Surrender, I surrender, I want to know you more, I want to know you more, I surrender, Shela Mandala A hunger and thirst, a hunger and thirst. I'm stretched wide. I know you hear my cry. Speak to me now. Speak to me now. I surrender. I surrender. I want to know you more. I want to know you more. I want to know. Be healed, be delivered tonight in Jesus' name. Strong, so with my soul. 
surrender to Jesus. I surrender. I want to know you. I want to know you. I surrender. Father, as we surrender our lives to you, we eat your word, we receive your word, we eat of your banqueting table, we commune with you, Lord. We renew our commitment to God. We say, Lord, again and again, we'll come and sit with you and eat of that banqueting table. Lord, and I know that you'll send your ministering angels to minister unto the needs of your people, O oh God, that every mountain that they are facing and every valley that they are going through, O Lord, that you will make the journey easy on them, O oh God. Lord, that you will position them, that they will be blessed in the name of Jesus, that they will know who they are in Jesus, that they will understand, O oh Father, that all authority in heaven and earth and below the earth has been given to them through Jesus and in Jesus, and they will exercise that authority in Jesus' name, O oh Lord. Lord, even tonight, Lord, they will see a mighty hand of God. Even tonight, the answers will be given to the problems. Even tonight, the sick bodies will be healed of God. Even tonight, oh Lord, you will give them those financial breakthroughs in the mighty name of Jesus, oh Father. And I pray that you will bless them. You will honor them. You will, oh Lord, enlarge the territory. You will increase the borders of God. And you will bless them in the mighty name of Jesus. As Abraham was rich in faith, cattle, gold and silver so shall your church will also be they will be rich in that authority exercise the power that God has placed within them and they will see O oh Lord that every mountain will be cast into the sea every problem every enemy that they have seen today they will see them again no more in Jesus name as your servant I declare and decree your blessings upon each and every individual present here in the sanctuary and I release your Holy Ghost I release Shalom I release the kingdom of Yeshua of righteousness peace and joy of the Holy Ghost to be their portion that they will never be the same bless them lift them up and make them an example to the world to see that their God is their faithful God we thank you and we honor you. In Jesus' most holy, mighty, and matchless name we pray. Amen. Now the grace.